but I am Sally Benson and I'm the mobility specialist here at East Hill. I kind of have a little slogan that goes with my name, Sal Gal, the mobility pal. So there you go. Um, we are going to get into joint vitality. It's the first webinar of mine and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's dive in you guys. So in our workshop this evening, we're gonna cover a few um, topics on the joints of your body. So first off, what kind of joints do you have in your body? Okay, what do our joints, or sorry, why do our joints get stiff and sore? What happens when we don't move enough? How do we use our joints in the way they are supposed to move every day? And how do we improve the ROM, that stands for range of motion of a joint? So let's talk about what kind of joints do you have in your body? So there's three different kinds. The first one is your immovable joints. And these are the fixed joints that do not move. For example, the bones in your skull. You definitely don't want those to move. Number two, slightly movable, also known as cartilaginous joints. These joints are two or more bones held pretty tightly together and they only have a limited amount of movement. And that would be the vertebrae in your spine. Number three is your freely movable joints, also known as synovial joints. They have that synovial fluid, enabling the joints to move really smoothly against one another. And those are the most common joints we have in our bodies, like your knee and your shoulder. I should say knees and shoulders, because you have two of each, right? So the ones we will be discussing tonight are number two and number three, okay? Okay, so let's start by doing a little poll. Let's go for how well do your joints move and how do they feel on a day-to-day -day basis? So go to that little icon, the, the triangle, square, and circle, and you should see four choices there. A, I have no issues and I can do everything and anything. B, I feel tight and sore whenever I move. C, I feel like I do most movements well, but some are a little bit more restrictive than others. And D, I'm not sure what I feel. So go ahead and select those. I just wanna have an idea of how you guys are feeling on a day-to-day -day basis with those joints of yours. C is winning. C is winning. Yeah. Okay. Seven vote C, two for B. One for A. Nice. Awesome. So those of you for B and C in particular, you're going to really enjoy tonight's webinar because you're going to um, learn some tools that are going to help you feel and move better. Okay. A, I think I have a, a little idea who that might be. Um, anybody answer D there, Chris? Nobody, Nobody answered D. Okay, good. So you're all in two into um, in tune with your body, so to speak. So good for you. All right. So moving on, um, let's try the chat box. Okay. Let's do one more question. What comes to mind when you hear the words joint pain and stiffness? So go ahead and write a word or two in there for me. I want to know what you guys think. Arthritis, yes. Anything else, you guys? Old age, shoulder replacement, absolutely. Old injuries, you bet. Yeah. Motion is lotion. I love it, Marissa. <laughs> Gee, where'd you hit that from? <laughs> Pain, yes, wear and tear. Excellent, you guys. Tight knees and stiff shoulders. Interesting. Okay. So hopefully I can answer a few of those questions with the stuff I present to you guys tonight. Okay. So let's um, hip pain. Okay. I love working with hips. Okay. So next slide up here. Let's briefly chat about um, the difference between mobility and flexibility. So a joint can do both. We need to know what the difference is between the two. So on your left, you'll see mobility, okay? So some of you may not know what these terms mean precisely, and there is some, some mis misconception as to what mobility really is. 
So mobility is being capable of moving freely and easily, ability to move physically with control and with your own strength, to move, right? Strength training joint tissues. So what is flexibility then? Being capable of being moved or bent. So if you've ever had, um, if you've ever come to physio, you will have a physio check your, your range by moving you in different positions, okay? That's be, being moved passively. Ability to move passively um, achieves a range of motion, useless range, okay? Range of motion in which a person has no control over. Passive stretching only increases stretch tolerance. So you might feel like you can do more, more range, but you're actually not strong in there. Okay. So when people struggle with chronic pain and stiffness, they generally want to stretch things out. But did you know that stiff and sore doesn't necessarily mean that it's tight? It actually needs to be strengthened rather than stretched. Okay. It's signaling that there's weakness and that's how the area protects itself by tightening up. All right. The top three areas usually requiring the most attention with adults for mobility issues are, like you guys already mentioned, spine, which includes neck and your back, shoulders and hips. So why do joints get stiff and sore? Well, we are getting further away as a human race um, by moving in ways that we, our ancestors did move and we don't anymore, okay? Due to our environment, our jobs and our livelihoods. So we sit on furniture now rather than squat to the ground. Um, we sit for much longer periods of time than our ancestors ever did. Okay, we don't hunt and gather anymore. And machines have taken over a lot of the labor intensive work for us. Another reason our joints become stiff and sore is that we overload our muscles in the gym. So you see a big dude, right? Just because he's been crushing large amounts of weight doesn't necessarily mean that he has at, like good moving joints. He might have dysfunctional shoulders. Why is that? And because their joint tissues are not strong enough to deal with the load that's being asked for them to carry. All right. So just because there's a strong dude doesn't mean he's got great joints either. So how do we help prevent joint stiffness and soreness from happening? How do we use our joints in the range of motion they are supposed to move every day to imitate our ancestral movement. Cars. What is a car? Beep, beep, nope. <laughs> Not that kind of car. I know I like that little, that little picture, it's kind of cute. So, car stands for controlled articular rotations. This means taking your joint through its available range of motion slowly and with intent. Daily or morning cars, as we like to call them, are meant to be done every day. Okay? I'll say that again. Every day. All joints should be able to move independently of one another. By performing cars on a regular basis, you will help maintain the av available range of motion in a joint by providing or providing signals for tissue remodeling. You get to train your mechanoreceptors. I know that's a big word. Mechanoreceptors are specialized sensory receptors that provide information to your central nervous system about touch, pressure, vibration, and skin tension, okay? Cars also prevent fibrotic tissues from maturing. Fibrotic tissues are scar tissue, right? What we get from an injury or after surgery. And CARS also helps delay and prevent osteoarthritis. So in essence, you guys, CARS are amazing. We need to do them. So how do we make that sim in simple terms? There was a few large words in there. So how do we, how do we look at it in simple terms? What do, we, what do CARS do? So they help maintain range of motion of a joint. They provide articular health and longevity. They are a great way to assess and screen a joint's performance. And they can also be used for rehabilitation. Okay, we call those baby cars. So daily cars, morning cars, daily cars, whatever you want to call them. 
done every morning. You can do them as a warm up before exercise. I like to do that myself. Movement, focus, and practice. Okay, so sometimes when we start doing these, we don't, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm doing these right, but it's about just practicing. Okay. As we live in our comfortable world, our brain won't waste energy on moving in ways that we don't use every day. It's like, well, you're not doing that anymore, so I'm going to stop moving. I'm going to stop providing energy to that area. So if we don't use it, we lose the capacity to use it. Let's try some cars. Okay, so we're actually going to try some of these out. This is an interactive workshop, like I mentioned earlier. So I'd like you to find a little bit of space, not a ton. You don't need a massive room or anything. A little office is just fine. Um, somewhere you can move your arms and your legs. Um, and you can watch and try some of these out. So I've, I've actually videoed myself doing these at the gym at Sterling. So I wanted to, to share these with you guys and we'll go through a few of them together. So um, I want you to watch and then try them out. I've got a couple of areas that have two different videos for two different angles so that you can kind of see a little bit better and how it's supposed to look. When we're doing these, I want you to kind of um, remember that I am me and you are you. So things might not look the same. We are different bodies, right? So I want you to just remember that as you're trying these out. Try to keep the rest of your body as still as possible by squeezing your abs and your legs into the floor. Here's something that's really interesting too, is if you are sore in any of those areas, we don't wanna push through pain. So make the articulation smaller and avoid those painful areas. Stretchy feeling is great and okay, but pinchy and tingling sensations are not. Okay, so I don't want you to push through any pain. Are you guys ready? Okay, so let's dive in here. The first one we're gonna try is neck cars. So I want you guys to find a space where you have room to stand and all you're gonna do is move that head around, all right? So I'm gonna play this probably a couple of times so you guys can watch one and then try one out. So bring your feet hip distance apart. You're gonna tighten up those legs and your abs and your arms down by your side. All right, so here's what it looks like. All right. Hi, Sally. All right, so. Scrape it along your collarbone and then you're gonna draw a big circle up and over to the other side. And then scrape that collarbone down to the middle and then I'm gonna go around again one more time in this direction while I'm trying to keep my shoulders where they are. I'm not shrugging or anything. I'm not moving my rest of my body. I'm keeping everything super still okay, and super tight. And I'm gonna go around one more time and to the center and then bring it up. So usually when I do this, we do it about four times in each direction, but just for tonight, we're probably gonna do about two or three. Okay, so I'm going to show that to you guys again. You can follow along if you like. Here we go. And I'll give you cues as you're trying this out. So you're going to tuck that chin down to your chest. Draw that chin along your collarbone over to your shoulder. Drawing a big circle up and over to the back, meeting to your other shoulder and back to the center. You can do it more slowly than I'm doing it here as well. Once you do about two in one direction, you're gonna switch sides and go around. Now here's a great question you guys are thinking, I hear cracking and all sorts of weird noises going on. Pretty normal. When you start um, getting better at doing your cars and more consistent, you will actually provide that synovial fluid um, more consistently in that joint and you will get less cracking, less crunching, less grinding. I'm gonna show you one more time. Up and over and around, keeping those abs nice and tight. And then over. Let's try one more time going up and over the other side.
Nice job. Good. I hope you guys tried that. You can also do these sitting, by the way, but I wanted you to get up and stand because we're going to be out standing for a few. All right. I'm just going to click over here to the next one. So now we have your trunk cars. So trunk cars are your torso. You're going to draw a very similar circle to what your neck cars look like. Okay. But this time your chin and your head are not going to move. So to start with, you want to tuck your chin in a little bit. All right. You're going to cross your hands over your chest and you can either have a fist or just put your hands on your shoulders. All right. So let's watch this one. You guys can learn kind of how it goes. So if you can be wider than your hips for this, you're going to roll through your spine. And then I'm going to rotate to one side without letting my hips move. And then I'm going to draw myself all the way back behind me over to the other side and come back to the center. Once again, you're going to continue one more around and about. And then you're going to reverse the direction. So I'm going to turn to my side here so you can kind of see how my back looks. Up and over to the other side, making sure my hips don't move and my legs don't move here. And one more around to the back. So now that you've watched one, I want you to go up and see if you can try one of these as well. So I'll replay the video. You guys can follow along a little bit, have a little peek if you need to. Your abs are pretty tight here. So here's a little analogy while you're moving your torso around. Think of yourselves as a toy on a shelf. And you know some of those toys that their bottom halves don't move, they're on a stand, but maybe their top half moves and does all these cool little things. So you got stakes through your legs through into the floor. So you can't move your hips or anything below that, but your upper body gets to move around and do all these cool things. Keep breathing while you move. And then rotate back the other way. This one, I usually catch people moving their hips a little bit. Up and around and over and all the way up. Nice. Okay. That's your trunk cars. Those really grease up that upper torso for the day. I got to say they're really good. You'll start to enjoy those. Okay. Let's move on to shoulder cars. So this one, I have two separate videos. Um, one from the front and one from the side. So I want you to bring your feet back underneath your shoulders where you have them for your neck cars. And you are going to practice just for a second here, opening your shoulder and closing it. So you're gonna open and close inside that joint, trying not to round through your shoulder or move your torso back and forth. You're gonna really try and be um, isolating that joint. Okay, so here's the first one. You guys can have a little look. I'm gonna again tighten my abs, my legs, and my other arm. I'm gonna reach across and keep trying to open my arm until I get to the top. Then I'm gonna dish rag my shoulder joint as I rotate my arm out and back behind me. I bring my knuckles to my side and then I'm gonna reverse that circle. Now I'm opening, opening, opening all the way to my ear. And then I'm going to come across and back down. I'm going to do another one here. Dish rag, dish rag, dish rag. Around and to the side. Back. And now I'm going to open, open, open as I keep lifting my arm up toward the sky, across my torso, and down to the side. Here's a little gander from another angle. Once again, you guys, I've, I've got lots of tension in my legs and my abs, so I'm not moving the rest of my body while I move my arm in these ranges. Back, open, 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 
circling my ball and socket joint. Remember your hip and your shoulder are very similar joints. They're that ball and socket joint. So they move around the most out of your whole body. We need shoulders and hips to rotate as much as possible. If they don't, things start to um, be limited with our overhead reaches behind and then our hips don't want to move the way they're supposed to. So let's watch each one one more time and I want you guys to try some out if you haven't already. Reaching across and up. Circle, 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 round, round, round to the back. Knuckles stay in. And then I'm going to extend back like you're receiving a baton in a four by 100 meter race, right? Pretend you're on the track running. Bring it across. Make sure you guys get a chance to try both arms. Not all joints are created equal. All right, and we'll do one more. And then I'll flip sides to the other video. Okay, if you haven't already, let's give the other arm a go. Up and around, open, open, open. Now I'm gonna close it, close it, close it, close it. You're not sure if you're turning your arm the right way. What I always start with is saying to people, draw a little marker, mark on the inside of your bicep. And that's what you're trying to see as you come up and then you're trying to hide it on the way back. And then as you reverse, you're going to open and try to show me that marker mark on your bicep on the way back. One more. All right, brilliant. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. That one can be challenging, but I've had lots of people say already that once they start getting into that one a little bit more, they notice a big difference in how their shoulders move and feel. Okay, so this is gonna start on me again every time I wanna click to the next one, I gotta pause. Okay, here we go. So spine segmentations. This one, you guys, is gonna be done on all fours or what we call quadruped. So you're going to come on down to the floor. This one is very similar to a regular cat cow that you would see in a class somewhere, um, whether it's yoga, Pilates, whatever you name it. Um, some, you know, I do this at, at Forge quite often. Um, I also am a fitness coach at Forge Valley Fitness, and we do this on a regular basis in our warmups just to get that spine nice and juicy. So instead of doing just a regular cat cow where you're flexing and extending through that spine, I want you to think of this one as more like a little spinal wave, okay? So before I play the video, you're going to get on all fours and you're going to tighten through that core as much as you can, push the floor away through your arms, and then you're gonna to start to arch through your back. Let's watch this first one. So pushing through that floor. I'm gonna arch through my back as much as I can. And then I'm gonna to start to tuck my pelvis from the bottom and try to isolate my vertebrae one at a time as I flex into my cat. And I'm not gonna drop my head and my neck until I actually get there. Then I'm gonna to start to arch back from the bottom part again as I extend up through my spine. Shoulder blades need to stay where they are. Try not to squeeze them together. You're just going to go back and forth, trying to do your little spinal wave as it is. So you're still coming to a full cat position and a full cow position or camel, cat or cow or camel. Nice. So let's try that again. If you guys haven't already tried it, I want you to do another one. I'll still play the video in case you need to have a little peek up the top to see what it's like. So once again, arching through your back, making sure your arms are firmly planted into the floor. Tuck your pelvis down. So you're trying to hide, if you're a puppy dog, you're trying to hide your tail as you round up and through your spine. And then arching from the base again, sticking your tail up and out. 
as you spinal wave back the other direction. So go through that a couple of times. I want, I want you guys to feel some nice big contractions in that along that spine, right? I know this one's, this one's a favorite with anybody that I've tried this one as, with as well. All right, that is your spinal segmentation, you guys. So go ahead and keep trying that one a little bit while we get to the next one, if you like. Okay. So now it's your hip cars. I know these can be super challenging to start with. Um, so be patient with yourself here. These are one of my favorite cars to do, but I get lots of grunting and groaning from my patients or my clients who try this and then they're like, <laughs> so give yourself a break and just give it a go. All right. There's lots of different ways to do hip cars. Um, the one I've chosen is a side lying hip car. If you don't like to hold your head up, go ahead and grab yourself a little pillow or a yoga block if you have one readily handy. And then you're just going to prop your head on there after you watch these first two. So again, I've got a couple of different angles here. Let's play this first one. So stacking your hips on top of one another, as well as your shoulders, you're going to have nice big tension through those arms. I'm gonna lift my knee up, open my leg to the side, rotate through as I extend my hip and leg down to the back. Coming in, and then I'm gonna donkey kick back, open my hip back open, knee to my shoulder, leg down to the floor and extending. That counts as one. So you go up, out and up, inwards and back. Briefly meet the knees together, donkey kick back, open your hip, bring it up and front and down. Let's try the other angle here, thanks to my daughter who recorded this for me. Yep. So same thing here, you guys, knee to your chest. So anytime you're doing cars, I want you guys to fight for as much range as you possibly can get without pain. So if you're feeling good and it's hard and you're getting some lots of contractions, that's a good thing. There's a difference between working hard and pain and hopefully you guys know the difference between those two. Lifting up, open, extending to the back, bringing it in, and reverse donkey kick back. So see how I'm keeping my knee bent the whole time. You don't straighten your knee, you keep it bent. You can do straight leg hip cars, but it's a little bit more of an advanced movement. I don't recommend it to start with. Legs are heavy, right? You gotta shorten the lever by bending your knee. So I'm gonna play each one one more time and I want you to give it a go. Knee up and open, rotate in without dropping your knee down, extending behind you, bringing it in briefly, donkey kick back, open it up to the ceiling, bringing it back in front and down. So usually when we do hip cars, we do about four on each side. You can do them before a workout or as a morning um, lubrication, so to speak. And sometimes I even do them after a workout as a little cool down for my joint. I just don't add a bunch of tension to the rest of my body. One more time on this other angle. And as you can see, this is filmed at our Sterling gym. Beautiful little space we've got there. Good. Try one more, you guys. all the way in and down. And you should feel 
that your back is not playing along at all. Everything should be in your glute and in your hip muscles, okay? The minute your back starts to arch and flex through these, means that you're trying to go too big, okay? You need to isolate that um, hip area with your butt. Okay, let's see if we can move along here. Okay, knee cars. So bring yourself down to a seated position. Hopefully you guys can still see your laptop from where you are. Um, knee cars. So knee cars are not just a hinge joint. They actually pivot. Sometimes they don't pivot so well, but we actually want them to pivot. So this is an interesting one to try because there's not a lot of movement with it. Um, so sit as comfortably as possible. And then you're gonna grab onto your femur or the thigh part. Okay, so make sure that your hip isn't moving through this one. You're just going to try to move your shin from side to side a little bit. I'm sure you guys are like, what on earth is she talking about? So let's have a look. So I pull my pant leg up so you can kind of see. So I'm just gonna do a little capsular rotations here to start with. So you can see my shin pivoting around back and forth. And this is what a knee car would look like. So you can see the, the movement is pretty small here. And you can go both directions. So this one might be a little bit frustrating because you're it's like, what do I contract? How does it move? Just play around with it. So I'm going to play this one a few times just so you have a bit of a, a chance to play. Sometimes um, when I start with patients, they don't understand the lifting part of it. So just do this first bit here where you keep your heel on the floor and you're just going to try to rotate that shin from one side to the other. You'll feel a nice little contraction up top part of your calf and notice that my foot is flexed here. So make sure that you keep that ankle and foot flexed. That's what you call dorsiflexion. Couple more times here, peeps, because you got two feet, right? You got to try both. Let's say feet, you got shins and knees. I should get Chris to try these while he's sitting there. <laughs> these are actually fun. They don't um, they don't move too much to begin with. When I started, I was like, there's nothing moving here. But eventually they actually start to move a little bit more and a little bit more your knees need to know how to pivot. Let's do one more, you guys, and then we'll move on to the next joint. In and out, round and about, and then you can lift. So here, what, just remember when you're doing a knee car is that you don't fully straighten your knee. You just lift it a little bit. You have to keep your knee bent. Once your knee is fully locked in place, it's nothing's gonna pivot. So you have to make sure that your knee is bent still a little bit. Doesn't mean you can't do a little circle in there. Okay. Wonder what your thoughts are with that one. We'll see at the end. Okay. Let's move on to the next one here. Elbow cars. So bring those elbows, or sorry, you're gonna come back to standing first of all, or on your knees. You can sit on your knees too, if you like. Um, so you're gonna bring those elbows into your side, nice and tight and then your arms down to the side. Start with your palms up. So all the same rules apply for this car. You're gonna keep your abs nice and tight, okay? And your legs as well. So here's what an elbow car looks like. Just like your knees, elbows, and forearms, they pivot around. So notice my arms and my armpits are squeezed into my body, so I know that my shoulder is not moving. <clears throat> The rotation is strictly coming from that forearm and my elbow. Great to um, help with any tendinopathy and things that you might be experiencing in there. You want to take that articulation maybe a bit smaller if you have any pain or tenderness through those tissues at your elbow. But great to do and then see how I reversed it. So I did palms up for a bit, and then I started with palms down. 
I'm going to play this one more time. Palm goes up. Palm goes down. Twice through this way. Good. And then you're going to reverse knuckles up. Do you like, kind of looks like a bicep curl. Yeah, you're right. It does. That's going to be the supporting muscle group that's helping you squeeze. Okay. How about wrist cars? Wrists don't move a ton, but we need to still move them to keep them healthy. All right. So these, this one's gone from the side. I, well, I can't remember if I do one from both angles here. Um, <clears throat> so before you try this one, I want you to pretend that you have um, your favorite drink that's balanced on your wrist and you don't want to spill it. All right. Um, we don't want to rotate through that forearm this time. It's just going to be your wrist moving up and around. I find these ones very challenging. Again, make sure that it's not a huge amount of a circle that you're feeling weird things happening, but I want you to give it a go and see how it feels. So I'm going to hold my forearm there and I don't want to spill my favorite drink that's balancing on my wrist. And I'm creating tension again through my forearm by squeezing into my, my arm into my body. And I wanna keep a nice straight hand. So I'm trying not to cup. Sometimes it gets a little cuppy there. And I'm trying my hardest not to. So you invert, go back, evert, both directions. You flex and extend through that wrist. So the, the nice straight hand, I call it a ninja hand. So that's your goal is to have a ninja hand the whole time. Let's play that one more time. A good practice this uh, for this one, you guys, is to actually put um, an eraser or you can even have a something small on your wrist and then if you end up rotating through that forearm that item will fall off i recommend that versus putting your favorite drink on your wrist <laughs> you don't want to spill and, and then trying your other hand evert extend evert or sorry invert and then flex all those funny words and then reverse directions. Trying my hardest not to bend my knuckles, oh my gosh. That's a gooder, I tell ya. Okay, ankle cars. So you can do these from a seated position if you prefer. So you can sit in a chair, you can sit on the floor. This one I'm standing. Um, so you can squeeze your leg a little bit more so you can hold on to a chair if you like or hold on to the wall. Make sure the rest of your leg stays still so we don't want to move any other part. So pull up that pant leg so you can see what's happening in that ankle. So you're going to point your toe and or sorry point your toes and you're also going to flex that foot. And you're going to move it in a nice big circle. Um, I remember with my I used to teach at Accents. Um, dance studio I used to train the competitive team do some strength training stuff and they would they would start to do these ankle circles like this but there's there's no intent behind that there's no contraction behind there so make sure with these that you're really slowing things down so you can actually feel them so going for that big pointed toe taking it out and in and down and up once again I'm going to do both directions here so I'm going to go in one way and then the other, and then I'll show you a different angle. So I point my feet very well, but I don't flex very well. My ankles struggle in that dorsiflexion here. We all have our little areas that don't work as well as they need to. So 
So we have two feet, so let's try the other one. And sometimes when you point those toes and point that foot really hard, you might find a bit of cramping going on through the base of your foot. Cramping is your nervous system saying, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're doing right now. So as you continue practicing, your cramping should diminish. Up and out and around, pointing, flexing, lifting my toes up to the ceiling. Nice job, everybody. Those are good ones, especially if you're going for a walk. Do those before you go for a walk. It'll feel good. Okay, so this is the last one we're going to do. It's called intrinsic footwork. So take your socks off if you haven't already. It doesn't matter if your uh, toes are painted. I can't see them, right? Your goal here is to move your big toe without moving your little toes and vice versa. So you can push your other toes down if they're misbehaving when you don't want them to move. You can push them down with your hands and I'll show you that in the video as well. So intrinsic footwork is really great for helping to strengthen your feet um, and your toes should move on their own up and down um, just to have strong feet. So it looks like this. So you can push your little toes down. I'm gonna lift my big toe up and I'm gonna keep my little toes down as I lift my big toes up and down. And once again, if doing two feet at a time is too much, go ahead and just try one. Here I'm lifting my little toes instead of my big toe. I can always push my big toe down. And some people I try this on, they're like, I can't move my toes. What's going on? So you'll find that when you start to lift these toes, you'll feel some contractions going on in the arch of your feet. And the whole goal here is not to have your feet moving from side to side as you're lifting these toes. Let's try that one more time. I know you want to do it again. So little toes down, lift your big toe up, put it down, lift it up, put it down, up, down. Now little toes up little toes down, little toes up, little toes down. A couple more times. Now you're going to lift everything. Oh, one more. There we go. Now you're going to lift everything up. And then you're going to push that big toe down. Keep your little toes up hovering above the floor. I find this one the most challenging. Keeping everything up while you're tapping down. And then little toes all by themselves. Look, my, my pinky doesn't want to behave over there. He's being lazy. All right. I hope you guys got some fun uh, sensations doing those today. All right. So now that we've tried some cars, ask yourself, how did they feel? Was it hard to move your joints around? Were you moving around the rest of your body in order to get a bigger, uh, bigger range? So the question is, what happens if our joints don't move in the range of motion they are supposed to? And how do we fix that and make it better? Especially with that spine, shoulders, and hips area that everybody seems to have problems with. The answer is, what are these words on the screen? Pales and rails, okay? So pales and rails stands for progressive or regressive angular isometric loading. So there's no movement through these exercises. You are squeezing in a position as much as you can, okay? By training the long and shortest ranges of your ranges of your muscles closest to the joints with isometric contractions, pales and rails helps open up capsular space of a joint. It can restructure your tissues and it can be used for treatment and rehab. 
or even for maximal effort training, depending on the health of the joint. So how do I learn about pales and rails? So when you book with me at Sterling, you will learn how to assess your joints and your needs. Okay, not everybody has the same needs, right? What ranges are safe for you to work in? And how do you improve your mobility strength safely and effectively? Everyone is different, so not all positions work for everyone. There's so many different positions and modifications that we can use. And it's important um, that the person I see in, in person, right? Um, each individual has their own specific needs. So not sure if having healthy joints and mobility training is right for you. If you are not sure, always chat to your physio so they can help guide you in the right direction. Cars are safe to do, but pails and rails with me should be with a patient who has a pretty healthy uh, joint, meaning that you finish rehabilitation with your physiotherapist or if you have no pain, right? That to help. So remember the best way to keep those joints in your body healthy is to start practicing those cars. Keep up with your treatments if you're seeing a physio and keep up with your exercise regime. We would appreciate you completing the survey that you will also receive this weekend. Your feedback is important to us and so we would love to know your thoughts about this webinar and um, potentially things that you'd like to see in the future. All right. So question time, if you guys have any questions, let's open that up. What kind of questions do you guys have? Not loading them up with anything that you know you can't handle. You are going to make things small, maybe to start with, um, and then you can progress from there. But again, if you're not sure, always chat with your physio just to, to check in. But that's a really good question. And someone was wondering an example of an isometric contraction to increase range. Mm, okay, so um, like I said, there's different positions that you can get into for whatever joint you're working on. What we're trying to do is find your end range of that area. Um, so let's say it's for internal rotation of your shoulder. Lots of people can't take their arm down like this right? So we have a position called the sleeper stretch. And what you're going to do is you're going to lie on your side and you're going to get your arm actively into where you can get it. And then you're going to take your hand and push into that passive range. What you end up doing is holding that stretch for a little bit of time. And then you push and pull against that. And that's what the pails and rails looks like. And it's everybody's a bit different as to how much um, isometric contraction they can put into these movements, but you need to know kind of where to put your shoulder, make sure that you're not compensating in other areas, making sure that everything's in the right spot. Anything right. else there, Chris? I think that's it. For I think that's it. Yeah. Awesome. You guys. And you know what, um, if you feel that you have more questions, you can always reach out to me at East Hill Physio. Um, there's cards of mine at each location, but um, if you want to write it down, sally.easthillphysio at gmail.com. Feel free to email me with any questions that you might have. And um, I hope to see you guys. If you have any joint issues, I'd love to help you out because we all want to move a little bit more in life. And I want you guys to get the most out of your activities that you would like enjoying. So thank Sweet. you for joining me tonight. And I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about your wonderful body and what it can do and how we can help you do more. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks so much for, for joining me tonight. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a new, um, new webinar come the new year. Not sure who's gonna be presenting yet, but I'm sure it'll be another great session with one of our peeps here. Hope you guys, uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great Christmas and happy new year and all that stuff. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon.